Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets project in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to try to do a help desk system, or at least the first bricks or the first draft of a help desk system that can help us to manage the petitions or the inquiries or the questions maybe of our customers or of our internal team. It's a way to keep control of the requirements asked by any of our stakeholders. It is used a lot in IT, for example, or in anything where there may be some customer service. It may be the services that offer that your company offers or the services that a department or area of your company offers to the other departments. This project has multiple stages. The first stage will consist of a formulary that we may start doing in Google Forms, then we may see if it's the best fit or we have to change to an HTML form or something else. For now, we're going to start with a Google Form. It may be the easiest way because a, a form in directly in Google Sheets may not be so comfortable for the final user. And then we're going to store all the information in a Google Sheet and this will start the process of the requirement. So we have to manage some times, some responsible, uh, a response, an alert. If, I, if after five or 10 or 20 days, no one has responded to this requirement, then something must be done and all that. So we're going to begin with a Google form. So here we're going to type form dot new or forms dot new. We're going to label this help desk requirement. So this is going to be a customer focused help desk. So the customer will have access to this form in the web page or in social media or whatever. And it's going to require the following. First, a mandatory email. So we're going to go to settings and in responses, we're going to check these collect email addresses. We could change this send responders a copy of the response to on, but I would like to do this more in a more personalized way. So we may do this later, or we may try it later to see how the mail arrives to the customer and if we want to customize it or not. I don't want to allow response editing because I don't want the possibility of changing the original requirement. This may be a cause for trouble later. We're going down back to questions and we can see that it has automatically created as a first field, the email and it's mandatory. Okay. One of the things that Google Forms doesn't do that well is the conditional dropdowns. So it would be nice that if I check an area, then uh, the following will be some categories for that area. So this doesn't work so well in forms. We could simulate it with sections and going to a section depending on the answer, but we can look at this later. For now, we're going to keep this very simple. We're just going to add an area question, area of the, re of the requirement. Let's say we have um, a Google Sheets Academy and here we could say that the possible options or where my customers may uh, need requirements may be in the courses department, in the refunds department, in the subscriptions department, in the technical department. Maybe that if things aren't working as they should or something like that. Of course, this could be, this could be customized to your company, to your project, etc. Then to keep this simple, I think we're going to put, what is your requirement? And we're going to leave this as a paragraph. So the customer may write its requirement. That's it. We're going to leave it as it is. And the next thing we could do is we could go here to responses and create automatically a Google sheet, but I don't want to do it on purpose. I created manually and uh, separately 
my Google Forms and my Google Sheets, and I'm going to join them or to connect them via Google Apps Script. Why? So I can control what fields do I bring here. Just for the sake of the example, I'm going to go here to Responses and to create spreadsheet. And what you can see here, it not only creates the three fields of the three questions I already created, the email address, the area, and the requirement, but it also created a timestamp so that when I add a new answer, let's do an example here. And I click Submit, then automatically here I'll have my answer and I'll have an automatic timestamp where I can see the date and the hour where this was made. So this I may need it and this may prove helpful for me in my help desk to track eh, how long does a requirement takes to be solved, but I may need further fields. I may need, for example, a consecutive number of reference. I may need a responsible, so depending on the area, I could put who is the responsible right now, and I could add some other things later. This is why I don't want this to be automatic. So I'm going to go here and unlink the form. I'm going to unlink this form with the current spreadsheet link and I'm going to delete this sheet. I'm going to work with this one I've already created, this help desk system. And here this is still untitled. So I'm going just to click here and it brings automatically the same name to the file. Now there are two ways to connect the, sh the sheets with the form. The first one is doing the script from my Google Sheet and the second one is doing the script from my Google Form. I prefer doing this way from my Google Form. So we're going to go here to my script editor. We're going to create a function that we may call add answer. And it's important to give it an E object or event object. I could call it however I want. E our response normally it's called e it's uh, the common usage but you could call it however you want unfortunately this e doesn't have a lot of help from google apps script so we need to go to our help to the documentation google apps script we go to our reference and here we have this automation trigger and events and this event object is what I want to show you right now. These event objects depend on the application. Here's Google Sheets where I have this form submit that is the one that would work with Google Forms, but I'm not going to, to use it right now. And here we have the Google Form event. The one I need right now is this form submit and the form submit event has these four properties. The response, the source, the trigger UID and the auth mode. The one I need right now is this response. So going back to our script, we can have here E dot response. This will be our form response. So let's call it form response. The form response is actually a form response object. And if we go here to our reference regarding the form response, we have some events we can use with form response. Here there are a lot we can use. The ones we need right now is the get respondent email. We could use this get timestamp. This could prove useful. And Finally, this get item responses. That is where, where I'm going to get the answers to my questions. So let's begin with this get respondent email. So I can say that my email is form response dot 
get respondent email, you see that I copied and pasted it because if I do that and then try to look for my suggestions from Google Apps Script, I have none. I'm blind. This is what I don't like of using this event, but in the case of Google Forms, I need to use this event. I have my email, then I'm going to have my timestamp. That's going to be form response dot, I think it's just timestamp, get timestamp. So I'm going to copy it and paste it here. And finally, I'm going to have the rest of my responses. So this will be a question responses and it will be form response dot get item responses. This will be an array. So knowing in my case that I have two questions, then I know that the first response will be the response of this question and the second response will be the response of this question. And I'm going to need this get response method to get to actually get the response. So the easiest way to do this is that my question number one, or in my case, this is going to be the area. So area will be question responses in the position zero dot get response. And the question of the requirement or the answer, the response of the requirement will be question responses in the position one, and then we do get response. If we had more questions, maybe 10, 20, 30, then we could do an a for each or do a loop where we can go for each one of these items, zero, one, two, three, four, five, 20, if you want. For now, we're going to just look at these four things and see what do I get. So let's do just some logger logs. If you're not familiar with logger logs, this is just a way to show my system the values of my variable in a particular place in my code. Or I could change this to console log and it also works. Okay, so let's save. So I'm going to run, but I'm going to get an error. The first thing we need to know is that when I have these functions that have arguments in them and I run them, there will be a problem because there is no E when I run it from here. I need to run it from the event that will give us this response. In other words, I need to actually send an answer. But before sending the answer, I need to set up a trigger that's going to tell Google Forms or Google Apps Script that when a form is submitted, I want to execute this code. So we're going to go here to this trigger section. We're going to add a trigger. We only have one function right now. So we're, this is a function we're going to add, this add answer. This will leave it with the only option we have. Here we leave it also from form. And finally, we change this to on form submit. We can notify if there are mistakes. I leave it daily, but especially when we're starting to do the code, if we do it, notify me immediately, it will send us a lot of emails. So it's better daily. We're going to save. It's going to ask us for some permissions. We already have it set up. Now we can go to submit a response. We're going to add an email and we can put anything and submit. So now we're to see our logs. We go to this executions section. We go here and we can see our four variables. I have my email. I have my timestamp, I have my area, and I have my requirement. So it's working perfectly. The last part, 
I'm going to do for this first part of the project that it's taking a bit longer than I wanted, but it's good. I'm going to add this to my help desk system here. I could name this uh, requirements, requirements log, or requirements history, or just requirements. We're going to add here a header. So this is going to be our timestamp, then our email, then the area, and then the requirement. And it's fairly easy. Actually, first we need to connect with our Google Sheets. So we're going to go to our spreadsheet app service and then call this open by ID or open by URL method. Let's go with open by ID and we go to our Google Sheet. We're going to copy this code we have here after our D slash and before a slash edit. We copy it. Make sure you get all the numbers and the letters in quotation marks. We're going to paste it and this is going to be our worksheet. You can call this however you want. And now we're going to connect with our spreadsheet. That is this requirements tab. So we're going to go to our worksheet dot get sheet by name and the name is requirements. And that's it. The only thing we need to do for SS is to append a row. What this method append row does is that it looks for the last row with data and adds a new row below this last row with the data we give it. So we're going to give these four values or four elements in the same order, the timestamp, the email, the area, and the requirements. I know I already have them here. Timestamp, the email, the, the area, and the requirement. So in append row, I'm just going to give it an array that has the four elements, timestamp, email, area, and requirement. And that's it. I don't need anything else. So what do you think will happen if I run it again? I'm going to submit another response. This is already saved. So let's submit it. Technical video playtime is slow. Let's go to our executions and I have a failed message. Let's see if I can get a detail of what is the error. You do not have permissions to call a spreadsheet app open by ID. Okay. So why do you think this is? The thing is, and it's maybe a technical bug, is that I don't, I have not given permissions to my Google Apps script to connect with spreadsheet app. So I can do this in any of various ways. I like to have a function that is called permissions. And I could add this here. And if I'm going to work with Google Forms, then I could do a very simple form app dot get active form just so that I'm sure that it asks for all the permissions it needs. And if I was working with Drive app or with Gmail app, I would add here a line that doesn't do anything, but that obliges or requires AppScript to ask for the permissions. So I'm going to save. I'm going to select the permissions function and run it and see that it's going to ask me for the permissions to review the permissions, to give the permissions. And now that I have the permissions, I can run it again. So I'm going to send another response. Submit it. And let's see in my executions to see that everything's going well. So apparently it worked. And let's go to our Google Sheets. And again, it worked. So I've wasted 20 minutes of your time because I've done exactly the same that I did with just a button here connecting the forms and the sheets. 
is doing exactly the same thing. However, now I have the control. For example, if one, I want to separate the date and the time, I can do it. Of course, I could do this also with a formula, but I prefer to do it from my code and that this brings the fields that I want. So for now, the only field that I'm going to, to do for now, it's a consecutive or a reference or a consecutive code. The code that I can give my customer and my employees and the responsible area to track this requirement. So this is not a question we have. This is not a field that forms gives me. This is a field I'm going to create from scratch. So for now, we're going to add it maybe here before the email, say a uh, code, requirement code. And we're just going to put a number one here for the first one. Let's save. You see that I only added an element to my array and I didn't do anything else. So I'm going to submit another response. And here I have a number. So why did I, why did I want it to have a uh, number one first? Because what I want to do in this consecutive number is to uh, go to this uh, table, look for the last number I have and add one. That's it. No more. So for this here below my SS, I'm going to get range. I'm going to go to my the last row it finds that is SS get last row in the column where my codes are this is the column number two that's it and I want to get the value so it's getting the last value that I find in this case is one and I'm going to add one to this this will be called code and here I'm going to change this to code. That's it. No more I'm to save. And I'm going to run it again. Let's see. And you can see here that I have my number two. And each new requirement is going to have its particular code. I know this is not the most sophisticated reference. We could have it with some uh, uh, reference um, letters before, depending on the area, it could be S0001 or technical, it could be T002 or with a more complex code system. But for now, this works really well. The only problem is when I start the first time. Let's just delete this and send another response. What do you think is going to happen the first time? Let's submit. And here you could see, this is good that I don't have an error, but I don't have what I wanted. It added a number one, but as a, as a string. So I'm just going to do a, a conditional that says that if this equals to requirement code, that is when there is nothing more than my headers. If this equals to requirement code, then code, let's just name my, uh, declare my variable here. And if this is true, then code will be one. If not, then code will be of this. Okay, let's save it again. Let's delete this row again. And let's run it one last time. And here we have the first time it will be one. And let's send another just to confirm that everything's working. Perfect. So I have the first part of my project. We still have a lot to go. Because now, but what I wanted to show you independently of this project is that 
when I connect Google Forms and Google Sheets in a manual way, then I have a lot more control. I could add particular formulas, particular fields, the things I want. For example, if I had a current responsible here in another sheet, and this could do, we could do it in the next video, we could add here the responsible. If right now the technical responsible is Peter, then I could add here Peter. But if in one year it's not Peter, but it's Maria, then I have I change it in my in my responsible tab and with a kind of a B lookup in my code, I could see who is my responsible. And the next steps when we are lacking, we are missing and we're going to do in the next videos. There are two things missing. First, to track how my requirement is going. And then when the requirement is finished, how do I uh, mark it as closed, open? This is another thing maybe I, I would need to have a status. And that is when I create it, it's open. And when someone responds to it, it's closed. So we're just starting this project. Just let me know if you like it. And if so, we'll continue it in the next videos. And as always, if you like these videos, just subscribe to the channel or you can support me in my Patreon page where you can also find the templates and the code for this and the other projects we have in the channel. So thank you so much. See you next time.